Hello family, my name is Eddie and I want to welcome you to our celebration service online and on air. It's always a joy to celebrate Jesus together. And now before we sing some worship songs, I want to take a moment and celebrate many of you who are loving and caring for your church family. You are buying groceries for one another. You are praying for one another. Thank you for being the church at work. Indeed, church is not an event that we go to. It is a family where we belong. And now, please stand up and let us have church. All right, we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, wherever you are, get up on your feet. Let's dance. Let's sing together. And now put those hands together like this. Everyone. Very good. Come on.
Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, you never fail. You never fail. Jesus, we come before you today knowing that you are our Father, you are our Savior, you are our friend. Jesus, simply none like Jesus, He never fails, there is none like Jesus, no one else like Jesus.
Jesus, at the mention of your name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. Lord, in you we find our hope. In you we find our peace. In you we find freedom. In you we find healing. There is nothing impossible with you. And Lord, you know what you say, where two or three gather in your name, you are there. And we believe that in those, in the countries, oh God, whatever country it is, Lord, we thank you because you are there. And we thank you so much because you love us and you care about us. Lord, you are faithful. Welcome everybody that is joining us for our service today, whether online, on air, or by radio. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this first week on the 22nd, where Toto celebrates 36 years. Wow, God has been good. And so I decided to wear my Watoto t-shirt to celebrate the faithfulness of God. So I join everyone to say happy birthday, Watoto family. Let's pray and get into God's word. Now, Father, I thank you that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from your mouth. So speak to us today, I ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are carrying on our series, Thriving in Tough Times. And tough times will always come. And tough times will either make us or break us, depending on the mindset that we have. The most common mindset is a survival mindset. And that mindset focuses on what you as an individual can do. It thinks of just barely making it through the tough time or just merely staying in existence. That's a survival mindset. But the God kind of mindset, the kingdom mindset that we need to adopt in tough times is a thrive mindset. And that kind of mindset looks at tough times as an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to develop, and even flourish because the focus of a thrive mindset is God and what God can do. And the Bible says we must not conform to the patterns of this world, to the way this world thinks, but we have to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And that's what this is about, renewing our minds from a survival mindset to a thrive mindset. And today I want to talk about the power of prayer when it comes comes to thriving in tough times. Now, my friends, prayer gives us access to God's supernatural power that enables us to thrive in tough times. 
Usually, when we talk about prayer, there's many people and many circles that are a little bit skeptic about the subject of prayer. Why? Because maybe they've had a personal experience where they have prayed and nothing seemed to have changed or things didn't work or they turned out uh, in a different way from what they expected. Now, our personal experiences can never negate the power of prayer. We may not know all the answers as to why God answers prayer the way he chooses, but he truly answers prayer. I love what a preacher in the past century, Smith Wigglesworth, says when it comes to matters of faith and prayer. He says when it comes to those matters, we are not moved by what we see, we are moved by what we believe, and we believe in the power of prayer. Let me share a couple of testimonies about prayer. One is a testimony that we've all been a part of. You all know that we had 14 of our choir members, seven adults and seven children who tested positive for COVID and many of you have been praying well. Good news, God has answered our prayers and every single one of them has cured from COVID-19. Praise the Lord. God answers prayer. There is power when God's people pray. Now, I thank the doctors who have been treating them and the nurses, but doctors do the treatment. It is God who does the healing. There's power when we pray. One time, I remember in the middle of the night, I received a phone call from a lady who was desperate that her husband was dying. And she said to me, he's losing his breath and we are now at hospital. And in the middle of the night, obviously, you're not fully awake. I remember mumbling prayer and I just said, God, would you keep him alive and would you heal him? In the morning, I phoned her to follow up on how her husband was doing and maybe go to the hospital and visit. And she was excited on the other side. She said, Pastor, you won't believe it. After you prayed, he, she, he began to settle down. His breath came back, but we still went ahead to hospital and did the test and he was given a clean bill of health. There's power when we pray. And then she said to me, actually, he's driving me to work now. There's power when we pray. I think of our own story as we're taught to. Our, our first home, the building God gave to us, downtown Kampala. Pastor Gary came to this building, our founder, saw it, and God gave him a picture of this building full of people worshiping Jesus, young people. And he began to pray, God, give us this building. And in one of those prayer times, he was asking God uh, about the building and the owners had just wanted to sell us the auditorium. And God asked Gary, what do you want? Gary said, we want the whole thing, including the shops. God not only gave us the entire building, he also gave us the parking lots. And many of you, the pioneer generation of Watoto, know the story of how God miraculously provided. I can't forget, uh, as God also spoke to us to look after vulnerable children, the orphans, and the work was growing and we needed strategic partners. Marilyn, uh, Pastor Gary's wife, just made a simple prayer, God, would you give us strategic partners? And God answered, today we have tens of thousands of people around the world that are strategically partnering with Watoto. God answers prayer. God answers prayer. There's power when we pray. So what is prayer? Prayer is the divine privilege of communing with God. To commune means we communicate with God. We talk to Him. We listen to Him. We have fellowship with Him. And it's based on a relationship. Let me tell you what prayer is not. Prayer is not an event. Prayer is an encounter with God. Prayer is not an emergency plan. It's true we need to pray when we hit an emergency, but it's not a last minute resort. It's a lifestyle based on our relationship with God. Prayer also is not a weird or a crazy experience. Because sometimes people think they've prayed when they've done all kinds of crazy things. Not everything that screams and shouts is prayer, my friends. Yes, we may have expressions of, 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 of joy and tears in prayer, but it's never weird. Prayer is a simple heart connection and expression of our hearts to God. Let me share some biblical examples to illustrate the power of prayer when it comes to thriving in tough times. Remember, prayer gives us access to God's supernatural power that enables us to thrive in tough times. I'll start with the story of the children of Israel who were coming out from bondage and they were on their way to the promised land. In the middle of their journey, they met their very first battle with a, a tribe called Amalek. And here's what Exodus 17 says from verse 18 to 14. Amalek came and fought Israel at Rephidim. So Moses ordered Joshua and said, select some men for us and go out and fight Amalek. Tomorrow, 
I will take my stand on top of the hill holding God's staff. Joshua did what Moses ordered in order to fight Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Har went to the top of the hill. It turned out that whenever Moses' hands were raised, Israel was winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, Amalek was winning. But Moses' hands grew tired. So they got a stone and set it under him, and he sat on it, and Aaron and Har held up his hands, one on each side. So his hands remained steady until the sun went down. Joshua defeated Amalek and, and its army in battle. Verse 14, God said to Moses, write this up as a reminder to Joshua to keep it before him because I will most certainly wipe the very memory of Amalek off the face of the earth. Oh God, we pray you'll wipe the very memory of Corona off the face of the earth. This story highlights the power of prayer when we face tough situations. To bring a little bit of context, the people of Israel were just coming out of bondage. They were not a trained army. They were former slaves. And they were facing a very fierce warrior-like tribe that was experienced in battle. And it was their very first time. And the only way Israel won was through prayer. Moses lifting up his hands in prayer. As long as his hands were raised, Israel was winning. Please listen. There's a connection between the spiritual act of prayer and the physical results we experience here on earth. The spiritual impacts the physical more than we can imagine. And that's why God invites us to pray when we face tough times. He can cause us to thrive in tough times no matter what. Joshua learned this principle of the power of prayer, and he also applied it in his own leadership when he faced some tough battles. One time, Joshua had to face five different kings that had formed a coalition to fight him. It is similar to what we could be going through today. Tough times don't just bring one challenge. Sometimes tough times bring multiple challenges. We could be having a health crisis, and now that health crisis is being faced with a financial crisis a potential job loss, or a business catastrophe, a family crisis, uh, difficult decisions to make. All these challenges can all come at the same time. How do we go through them? Through prayer. Joshua chapter 10 records how he responded in this situation. From verses 5 to 11, it says, The kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, and uh, Jamoth, Lachish, and Eglon gathered their armies together. Those five Amorite kings moved all their troops into position to fight against Gibeon. Now, Gibeon had formed a, a treaty with Israel, and Israel was to protect it. Then they attacked it. They attacked Gibeon. Joshua was in the camp at Gilgal, and the people of Gibeon sent a message to him there. They said, don't desert us. We serve you. Come up to us quickly, save us, help us. All the Amorite kings from the Central Hill country have gathered their armies together to fight against us. So Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his whole army. The army included all the best fighting men. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. I have handed them over to you. Not one of them will be able to fight against you and win. Joshua marched all night from Gilgal, and then he took the Amorite armies by surprise. The Lord threw them into a panic as Israel marched toward them. Then Joshua and the Israelites won a complete victory over them at Gibeon. The Israelites chased them down along the road that goes up to Beth Horon. They struck them down all the way to Azekah and Makeda. The Amorites tried to escape as Israel marched towards them. They ran down the road from Beth Horon to Azekah. Then the Lord threw hailstones down on them. The hailstone, the Bible says, killed more of them than the swords of the Israelites did. When we depend on God through prayer, my friends, and we are facing tough times, he gives us victory. There is so much more that God does for us when we pray than we can do on our own. That's what this portion of the story tells me. Now, that doesn't mean that we should do nothing. No, Joshua actually put out his best fighting men. So we must always do our part. We must do our best. We must put in effort, but we will pray as well. Prayer must never become an excuse for our laziness or for our lack of effort or poor planning. We must be engaged in prayer. The story continues in verse 12, and it says, so the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel 
on that day, Joshua spoke to the Lord. He prayed. While the Israelites were listening, he said, Son, stand still over Gibeon. And you, moon, stand still over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still. The moon stopped. They didn't move again until the nation won the battle over its enemies. You can read about it in the book of Joshua. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky. It did not go down for about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since. It was a day, listen, when the Lord listened to a mere human being. Surely, the Lord was fighting for Israel. It was a cosmic miracle, like some people say. Here's what I want to bring out from that story of Joshua praying and saying, sun, stand still, and moon, stay where you are. God listens to us when we pray. And he can even answer our most crazy prayers. This power when we pray. God called us as Watoto to plant a church in Gulu and be involved in the healing of that community. And I can never forget when we were looking for property. And they showed us a very beautiful piece of property right in the middle of Gulu town. And the person who took us there said to us what the price was. And of course, uh, we didn't have that money at that point. But I remember Pastor Gary standing at the corner of that uh, piece of land. And we were there with a couple of pastors. And he prayed a crazy prayer. And he said, God, this property ultimately belongs to you. If you want us to have it, give it to us, God. Not at our price. Not at the owner's price. But at your price. Guess what, my friends? God answered that crazy prayer. He gave us that piece of property, not at our price, not at the owner's price. It was better than the two. It was a God price. Cheaper than we even wanted to pay. And miraculously, God provided the resources. There is power, my friends, when we pray. God can answer the craziest of prayers. Now, I want to start to conclude this message on the power of prayer today. By jumping into just some New Testament stories, there are very many. When we think about the early church, the early church faced so many challenges, but they were able to thrive in tough times. Why? Because of the power of prayer. One of those stories is in Acts chapter 12, where uh, King Herod arrested some disciples and he actually put to death one of the disciples. And it pleased the Jews who were not happy about the growth of the, uh, the believers. And when it pleased the Jews, Herod decided to arrest the big fish, their leader. He arrested Simon Peter and put him in prison. And here's what that account says. Acts chapter 12 from verse 5. It says, so Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. And the night before Herod was to bring him to trial, because Herod wanted to kill him, Peter was slipping in between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter to the side and on the, uh, on the side and woke him up and said, "Quick, get up." He said to Peter, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. That was a response from God when the church was praying. Here's what I learned from this story. When we pray, God acts in supernatural ways to help us when we are completely helpless. There's power when we pray. Peter couldn't help himself. The church was very helpless, but they could pray. They could call on God. When the angel came and woke up Peter and took him out of the prison, Peter thought he was dreaming. He couldn't even believe that God had sent the answer in form of an angel to deliver him. Verse 11 says, when Peter came to his senses, then Peter came to himself and said, now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. There's power when we pray. In fact, even when Peter appeared to the church that was praying, the Bible says the church couldn't believe. It was an unbelievable miracle. There's power when God's people pray. Prayer positions us to experience amazing miracles in our lives. When we are going through tough times, my friends, we are not left alone. We can pray. There is power when we pray. So as I conclude today, I just want to remind you, prayer is a powerful key 
that enables us to thrive in tough times. Prayer gives us access to God's supernatural power that enables us to thrive in tough times. We don't need to have a survival mindset when we have a God who is able to deliver us. We need to adopt a thrive mindset because we can access God. James 5, 16 says, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Next week, I'm going to talk to you on how we can pray effectively. Wow. As I close, that final scripture I read says, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Let me ask you, what kind of person are you? And you may be wondering and saying, who is a righteous person? Let me tell you who a righteous person is. A righteous person isn't one who does good works. Good works never make us righteous, good as they are. A righteous person is one who has embraced Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. The Bible says the righteousness we have is by faith in the Son of God. And today, I want to invite you who has never made a decision to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior to make that decision now. God will give you His righteousness. And then you can also pray powerfully and effectively. You can also thrive in tough times. Why? Because God becomes your father and you can access him through prayer. If that's you, wherever you are, I would like to pray with you. Just repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus, today I recognize that I need you. I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I ask you, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Make me a child of God. Thank you. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer, today you have become a righteous son and daughter of God. You are a part of the family of God. Thank you. And I want to welcome you to the family of God on behalf of the greater family. In fact, the Bible says there's a party in heaven if you pray that prayer from the bottom of your heart. Let us know how we can help you by writing to us or indicating on the, whatever medium you're watching this service today. We would love to help you. Now, the service is not yet done. Pastor Eddie is going to come and lead us through the rest of the service. And I cannot wait because he's also going to lead us in a session where where we are going to pray for you, my friend, concerning the things that you are facing today. It's been a privilege to bring God's word to you as always, and I cannot wait to be with you next week. God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you, Pastor Julius, for preaching God's word. And congratulations to all of you who have said yes to Jesus Christ. Welcome to the church family. And now it's time for us to worship Jesus by returning our tithe and offering. Remember, our collective generosity helps us to reach people with the most amazing message in the whole world, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is how we give. You can give through mobile money, both on MTN and Airtel. The second way, you can give it through direct bank transfers and using banking agents in your communities. And the third way, if you live close to one of our locations, you can walk and bring your cash offering and slip it in one of our gift boxes. Now, for those on mobile money, let me walk you through the steps that you can take to give. For MTN, dial star 165 star 3 hash. The Momo pay code is 148775. Let me say that again, 148775. And now for those of you on Airtel, you dial star 185 star 2 star 3 hash. And the business number is 700000. Let me say that again, 700,000. And for more giving options, check out our website on watodochurch.com forward slash give. 
And as we give, let us sing a wonderful song called Amen, which I know captures God's heart for our country and our world in this season that we are going through. Let justice fill this nation Have mercy, Jesus, please forgive our sin Take the heart of stone away Teach our hearts to bow before your name
now for the next couple of minutes, I want us to pray together because God answers prayer. And his word reminds us in Philippians 4, 6 that don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything because our God never fails. Let us pray right now. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because we know when we call upon your name, you hear us as your children. And so, Father, I stand on behalf of the family that is part of this service, and I present the needs that they have in their hearts. And first of all, I want to bring this situation that we are going through in this season that has caused fear, anxiety, and worry. You tell us in your word that you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God, I'm praying in this very moment, instead of worrying about what's going to happen in the future, we are trusting that you are holding our future because you know the end from the beginning. Father, I'm praying for those who have lost jobs, may you provide for them. I'm praying for those who are sick in their bodies, may you heal them because you are God, our healer. I'm praying for those who are struggling in any way, I'm praying may you come through for them because you are the God who is with us in every situation. Father, I continue to pray for our families. I'm praying in this season, if there are any relationship issues, God, I'm praying may you heal our relationships. I'm praying for unity in this season. Heal us of anything that may be breaking our families apart in the name of Jesus. And Father, I want to bring our nation Uganda before you. I want to bring our leaders who are at the forefront fighting against COVID-19. Give them wisdom on how to lead us well in this time of crisis. I commit the president, I commit the ministers, I commit the health workers who are at the forefront of this battle. May you keep them safe, oh God, I'm praying. I'm praying for all the health workers, keep them safe from this virus. And I'm praying that may you empower them through this season to finish the work that you are doing through them. So Father, I'm praying for our economy as Uganda, but also the rest of the world. May you heal our economy in the name of Jesus. Father, we know you know the end from the beginning, and we know that you have us in your hands. So heal our world of this COVID-19 pandemic in the name of Jesus, because you are the God to whom nothing is impossible. And your word reminds us that if you did not withhold your son and you gave him up for all of us, how won't you along your son Jesus give us everything that we are asking? That is the God that we serve. So Father, I know according to your word, there is nothing that is impossible for you. So in this very moment, we receive all our answers. We receive healing. We receive provision. We receive peace in our hearts. And Father, we believe we're going to look back on this day one day and we say, what a God. Because God, you answer prayer because you love us when we come before you in faith and present our needs. So God, we thank you. We believe you've done what we've prayed for and you've answered our prayers. In Jesus' name I do pray and everybody said a big amen. I want you to join a global prayer movement called Unite 714, where we get to pray at 7.14 a.m. and 7.14 p.m. concerning the issues happening in our world today. For more information, check out the link below. Thank you so much for being a part of our celebration service today. We hope you have been blessed. Now, if you want to be prayed for, you want to receive some counseling, or join a virtual small group, email us at connect at watodochurch.com or call the number on your screen. Now, remember to follow the Ministry of Health guidelines to stop the spread of COVID-19. And finally, last week, we asked you to participate in the Beat of Your Love Dance Challenge to spread some love with your friends and families in this season. And many of you posted amazing videos. Now, I want you to stand up and we are all going to participate in this challenge wherever you are.